Uh, welcome to another episode of Threads of Enlightenment. As usual, I like taking the time right here to welcome the guests and to let them know that I personally deem a couple of things expensive that they came and they're willing to spend some of that uh, expensive stuff with us. It, time. Time is one of those commodities that has been given to every single one of us 24 hours and how we utilize that on a daily basis can dictate where we end up and how we end up. The other uh, is your journey. Scotty, thank you for coming and sharing your journey because it housed who you were and it made you who you are today. And I want to thank you so much, man, for coming and uh, sharing both of those quality time and, uh, and your story with us here at Friends of Enlightenment. Absolutely. I really appreciate being here. Excellent. Talk to the people. Tell them. I tell them the journey comes for a couple of reasons in our lives, Scotty. It comes, number one, to, to introduce you to you because you really don't know who you are. Uh, most of us are just living off the program, as I say, our parents program, our school, society, everybody, religion, everybody program. And so we're living off of the program. Uh, but the journey comes in to stop programming, unhook the system for a little while so that you can then begin to uh, investigate your program and begin to change your program. So talk to us about um, uh, your family unit. This is the place that they start to talk uh, program you and I. What was your family like? Absolutely. So my, I, I came from, I'm very blessed. I had a great family. Both my parents were together. I have two wonderful brothers. We grew up very middle class, which is what I've learned to be one of the harder classes to escape from because you understand mm -hmm. what comfort is, but you don't really understand what adversity yeah. is. And through that lack of understanding yeah. of adversity, it's hard to really understand how much further you can go because you're so used to comfort. Adversity is, is to bring us to that uncomfortable space where we are no longer capable to hold on to our own ability. We have to go somewhere else um, for this journey that we're about to uh, embark on. We got to get it from someplace else. So talk to us. Uh, you had this great family. Um, what was it like? Uh, how did you feel in that space with your brothers and the family and friends and all that stuff? What was it doing to you as an individual? Um, growing up in that middle class secure place as you said excuse me so i've uh i've always kind of been a black sheep it was never really like i stood out but i was also creeping in the shadows that's kind of like how i would operate mm -hmm. and move through my family and through my friendships and relationships in life uh, I'm sure there's a lot of people that were like me. I was the middle child, so I was the neglected one <laughs> because yeah. they care for the older one and then the middle one's whatever, and then they put yeah. all the focus back on the younger one. So because of that, <laughs> I think that deeply seeded a sense of uh, individualism in me, which led me to kind of mm -hmm. like carve my own path regardless of how it was I was raised and programmed by my family. Yeah, that is, uh, um, I'm sure looking back now, you see it is a uh, powerful gift that was given to you because of how you interpret it. And uh, before, sometimes we interpret it as a, a negative and we will go into that space for a little while until we began to grow up, as they say, meaning that we began to see, hey, that was a gift that I can, it gave me this ability that uh, without that, I wouldn't have had. So talk to us as to, um, you're here, you, you recognize I was a black sheep too, and I was the eldest, and I was always in trouble. And um, I wore it as a badge after a while because I couldn't help myself. So um, uh, talk to us about some of your challenges when you you know were in this space with your friends because i know what it is to be on um, i like staying in the background i like running the show from the background and they used to call us the puppet masters and stuff like that so talk to me about your life as to how did you manage your your relationship 
with those that are in high school and all of those things being the middle child and that one that uh, where the family wasn't focusing on you that much? Um, so like you, I was troubled. I, I would cause ruckus in school and wreak havoc in places, not really understanding what it was I was doing, but it was because yeah. of that lack of attention from home that I was acting out in various ways in public that would lead to me getting attention. Whether it was wanted or not, yeah. I didn't really, really, I wasn't able to conceptualize the reasoning behind my actions. I was just blindly acting. And because of that, I stood out. I developed friendships because of that. Some of them good, most of them bad influences, at least leading me down the wrong paths yeah. of life, pulling me into various depths that I necessarily didn't want to go, but would just travel along because it was the only form of acceptance I was receiving at those times. It, yeah, that's, um, have been there. Yeah, for sure. I, I'm sure a lot of people have. I don't think it's too uncommon. It just feels uncommon perceptually to you as the individual. You know, you're like, why yeah. is this happening to me? But there's probably tens of millions of people experiencing somewhat close stories to you. So don't feel too alone. A lot of people have the same experiences you have relatively, obviously. And the only way, the only difference between their experiences and yours is how you manage them, how you flow through them and what you learn from them, how you grow from them. That's where the real power comes from yeah. those experiences you get to have. I'm so glad you mentioned that because I want uh, just one of the purposes of Threads of Enlightenment is to to let the hearer know that you're not alone. Um, sometimes when one is in that dark space, Scotty, they, they take their lives because they feel alone. And it is our hope as you are listening to this, uh, by any chance you just turn it on or click it on and you're listening and you're in that space, you're, you're not alone. Um, and, uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to, uh, Scotty's information is going to be in this so you can get to him and have that conversation so that he can help you um to understand that you're not alone and that there's someone there that can walk with you to help you see clearly on the other side because um, it can get daunting there and um, if you're not aware that there are others on the outside that are walking and are available to you uh, you can uh, do something that will shortchange your um, your existence on this planet. So here you are, you're walking through these things, Scott, you're, Scotty, you're, you're dealing with them. You're going down the path that most, most loved boys take, you know, uh, 90% of us, we gone and we start gravitating to the madness, the beautiful madness. Um, as you began to navigate this, this life and, and this behavior and exposure to all of these things, um, what was it doing to you, man, as an individual, if you recollect, looking at uh, 2020, um, getting some insight as to what was it doing to this young man as far as his mind in relation to himself and the outside world? Um, so it was, I, so I was... I was too scared to do most of the bad things that a lot of these negative influences were trying to pull me into. So I was just, I became mm -hmm. an observer. So I would observe my friends doing yeah. these terrible things, spray painting cars, breaking into garages, doing various things. I was there, but I never acted on them because I had a deeply yeah. seated moral compass that was just, screaming at me telling me this is just so wrong and so detrimental not only to myself but to the people's lives that i'm you know doing these actions towards unwillingly so yeah it it kind of just like made me feel accepted and cool but i also felt like a fraud because i never did the bad things that everybody was doing <laughs> so 
Yeah. <laughs> there was like this duality of I, I I felt lost and confused, but then I also felt accepted mm -hmm. in these spaces that were accepting me. And it, it kind of yeah. just like perpetuated this observance ideology where I would flow through life observing and understanding and grasping what was happening around me so that I could I could understand I can move better going forward where did you get that compass from what what was happening in your life that it gave you that compass as you said that moral compass where did where did it come from within your family unit uh, and within you and, and uh, your work uh, I, I think it really came from disappointing people that I really looked up to and them telling me to my face mm -hmm you've just disappointed me. Yeah. I'm so upset or like, I can't believe you would do something like this. I think those moments were the traumatizing quote unquote experiences that mm -hmm. opened yeah. the doors of the realizations of my actions and how they were impacting other people's lives. So it was mainly through That's disappointment. Right. Right when I would disappoint people that I looked yeah. up to, it really hurt me. Yeah. I tell people that it, Trauma is, everyone experienced trauma. I mean, everyone, every single person. It's how we navigate through that uh, determines a couple of things. It determines how long we stay in it and um, what it does to us. And that is all based on your perspective of it. Um, the negative focus will keep you in there for such a, uh, for amount of time, but it also will bear fruit to other things. Um, if you switch your perspective, it will also um, cause you to bear fruit and, and change your life and create other spaces. So here you are, you're moving through, um, you're an observer, as you said, in your college with, with all the boys and moving forward. When you are now heading, getting older and heading to the different world, um, meaning going into the young adults and stuff like that, how did you navigate there? What school did you choose and why did you pick it? So because I wasn't the best kid growing up, I was also a very poor student. I skipped school mm -hmm. a lot. I didn't do my homework a lot. I would always pass tests. So I would pass my end of grade tests in my midterms and everything like that, but because I didn't show up to enough days in school or I didn't complete enough assignments throughout the year, I would constantly get D's and F's. I mean, I think I only got A's wow. in like art class and gym class and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Things where like I could just relinquish all of my thoughts and just act and play and do. Um, so that hindered my development substantially. I unfortunately failed my senior year of high school because I skipped so much school. They were like, we legally can't allow you to pass. You have to do another year. So I did another year. Yeah. And then upon graduating, I didn't have enough credentials to get into a university. So I went to a tech school. I was really interested mm -hmm. in um, like industrial engineering and just like mechanical engineering because I have a, a yeah. infatuation with cars and how they're engineered and how they can move you through the space that is the world. I, I think it's very, it's really awesome to me. So yeah. after about a year of taking engineering courses, I was like, this is really not for me. I, I this, I am <laughs> not focused enough to be an engineer. I feel like that's something that you do when you're like six years old and it kind of just like morphs you into an engineer playing with like <laughs> Legos and stuff like that. I was more into yeah. like <clears throat> playing sports and doing other like fun, silly activities with my friends. We would skateboard and BMX and all of that stuff. So, um, and en engineering wasn't in the books for me, but <laughs> I had a deep infatuation with design. So I yeah. would just, design things on the side, would draw and doodle. And that was always something that kind of like really captivated me. And uh, mm -hmm. that led me to 
go get normal jobs and just kind of like work with design thing, designing things and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, I started a clothing brand with some friends, like fresh out of college that led nowhere, but it was fun to like mess around, try to get some shirts, sell a couple. Like we got, we got a couple sales obviously, but it was infinitesimal yeah, yeah. in comparison to what it could have been, you know? So what, uh, uh, because everything is for a purpose. I tell people everything is a lesson learned. I'm trying to, um, I'm trying to find a word. I, I, I tell people uh, I don't like the word fail because I don't believe that one fails when you learn something. No. And um, so I'm trying to find a better word that can describe that space right there. If you find it, let me know. And I will gladly incorporate it into my vocabulary, but I'm looking for a word other than failure. So talk to me as you learned about the business aspects, starting one and the collaboration. You talked about the design piece. Talk to us a little about the, the because if you're starting a clothing brand, you gotta do some uh, collaboration. How did you manage those type of uh, relationships with people as you began to na navigate through your life? Um, so the way that my friends and I really like managed each other was we would hold each other accountable with weekly calls. We would call, be sure that everybody mm -hmm. was, you know, doing everything according to plan outside of our normal day to day jobs. And that kind of like helped yeah. keep us on track and push us to the goal that we were trying to achieve, which is, you know, have fun with it, make cool designs and get it out to the right people that will actually enjoy it. So just accountability. That was mainly the, the way that we yeah. were able to like gear ourselves and like keep us moving forward. Oh, good. The reason why I asked that question, because you had said you've always been this observer kind of thing, just watching the action, if you will, and just watching people. So I wanted to see what was it, how did you navigate being in that space? So you, you, um, you learned um, from this experience with uh, the uh, uh, clothing line, what happened from that point on with your life? How did you uh, move on um, from that? And how did that make you feel, if you will, when it didn't work out? Um, so when it didn't work out, it was obviously a little devastating. Definitely an ego punch because yeah. you think your idea is so great and you're so invested in it yeah. when no one else cares you're like oh wow i guess i'm worthless you know yeah. but that's not the case mm -hmm. the way i later learned about this is that as you were saying earlier about failure failure is an integral part of success you will never succeed yes. unless you fail learn adapt yeah. and move forward that's a lesson that i've learned time and time again through action sports, skateboarding, surfing, and snowboarding, because every mm -hmm. step is failure, but it's not a failure because yeah. it's just a learning curve that is better molding you into the athlete or the person, businessman, whatever you're trying to be. Yeah. Yeah. And again, like I said, I, I've, Scotty, I'm trying to find a better word because I don't think if you learn something that you fail. No, no. <laughs> you know, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I really am trying. I've been uh, talking to people about this word for the longest while because that piece has stuck with me for a little while because I, I remember reading something about failure and I was talking with someone that went through their journey. And the thought came to me, why, why do we call it failure when we learn, a, I mean, an actual valuable lesson out of it that uh, when you say failure it seems seems alien to me when it compares to one constantly learning because it wasn't failure it, it just was another way that you approach something and you find out that that was not the way for you you know and so um that's why i'm saying i'm grappling with this word so talk to me as you began to um as you said because yeah skateboarding and all these other things you're gonna you can bust your ass, you know, you can fall all over the place. But as you learn the different 
body mechanic laws and all these different things that you're applying, uh, you get better. So as you are uh, doing all of the sports, as you mentioned, and you're, you're refining your skills, um, where did it take you as you were moving forward in your life? Because you're this young guy, just um, uh, learned that uh, the fashion piece was not the journey for you. And so you're trying to find your way, if you will. Um, so it brought me, those, those action sports brought me out to California, which is the mecca of action mm -hmm. sports. So through coming out yeah. here, I was able to pair myself with some of the top performing athletes in the world and submerge myself into mm -hmm. their circle and befriend all of them. And through doing that and being around these high performing athletes, I learned a lot about how to really change your emotional state in real time to overcome adversity you're facing yeah. like immediately. So that was like a, a huge yeah. learning experience I got to have through uh, hanging out with these kids because you would see them do death defying stunts and they would have a complete composure over their face. And through the process of watching mm -hmm. them like gain the confidence to, you know, try this objective, you could see in their eyes, this is just this like, like yeah. a glaze overcome them where they just get hardened and hyper focused and can execute promptly and accomplish the task with little to <clears throat> excuse me with little to no effort so through yeah. that it kind of opened my eyes to the possibility of mindset and how your mindset is the ultimate like display of what it is you're feeling and the projections that you're having as you act and move through life. Yeah, sports is one of the um, uh, first industries that you can actually witness um, the, the individual, we call it the zone. And uh, that place, because I remember when I was running track and I was in the zone on a particular day. I was sick actually, and I didn't want to run. And my coach told me, he says, this is the best time run. And I was like, no, man, I just can't do it. And I got out and broke the records for school that day. And I remember, um, I remember the zone. The zone is very quiet. Um, the crowds were, because we were at the stadium, the crowd was out there screaming and I didn't even hear them. Um, but I was attentive to my breathing. Um, I, I heard the, the language the, the, of, of the wind. Um, I was listening to something different than what they were doing because as they say, uh, you're in the zone. And so when you're looking at an athlete or even a musician, some of those type sports where you're visually looking into it, you can see that those folks, man, Scotty, cross over when they're walking into that, and your eyes, this focus, this. But there's a, um, there was a calm there. When I finished the race, I didn't know I finished the race. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was like flying right through the the, the tape, <laughs> and um, I, I. It took me a little while to come out of it because I, you know, I did the lap, and that's when I, I was coming out of the zone. So, talk to me about getting there. What's the process as you began to watch these folks, um, and you now begin to say, "Okay, I'm going to model myself after this. I'm here. I'm drinking the, this energy. Um, now, I want to take some of this and." Um, deposit into me and then make uh, take me into the zone. Talk to me about that process. As you saw them, Scotty, how did you implement it into your life? What I what I would do now is I take a second, I breathe, I hyper fixate on the outcome that I'm trying to achieve, mm -hmm. and then I don't think. 
I just act. Yeah. Because I already know what to do and how to do it. But the chatter in my head is the main thing yeah. that is hindering me from acting. So through the breath work yeah. and through the hyperfixation on the outcome, I'm able to relinquish my thoughts and just enter flow naturally and quickly and act immediately. It's really helped yeah. me. There's, there's a, yeah, go ahead. Oh, I, I was saying it's, it's, it's really helped me overcome a lot of barriers that have built up in my head that have been there for mm -hmm. decades because I'm 30 years old. And once I've yeah. understood how to open those doors, I feel so stupid for not opening them so much sooner because it, it's so simple. <laughs> it's just, you just take a moment and you walk right through and then the other side is where life begins. So yeah, it is the breath, It is the breath. I tell people the breath is the bridge between the natural and the supernatural. Absolutely. It is that breath. And you'll see an athlete, um, visualization is a, is a powerful tool that the athlete will utilize um, because you'll see that athlete, um, you know, focusing, but what they're doing actually is visualizing themselves doing that uh, act. And they are now um, taking that breath and the breath is the bridge. And then they began to move. And as you cross that bridge, you'll see it. And so that's why I tell people when you look into that space and you're, we are, all of us are participating in a form of voyeurism where you're looking at that athlete crossing in to something precious that um, not unless you know what we're talking about, you won't know what we're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> but the principles are the very same thing that you apply in your life that with any situation that comes up to you, as Scotty was saying, who's learned how to uh, uh, bring that skill now into his everyday living and uh, achieving things. So talk to us, because I know, um, as you said, that process is exactly correct. Um, the battle is the mind. Talk to them, Scotty, about relinquishing that, because you have to come to a place where you surrender to the breath and not to the noise of your mind. And so that conversation right there is can be a difficult one so talk to them as to how do you surrender that because again as i mentioned it can be a difficult um, uh, conversation and release uh so a, a great way of doing it is by starting really small and working your way up to larger plays in life i mean I used mm -hmm. to be, a, as most boys, I used to be afraid to go and ask girls out and stuff. And I'm sure most guys yeah. understand that and girls to guys. But those those actions of just saying, F it, I'm going to do it and just going and doing it, yeah. that those small steps lead into the greater choices in life where you just have to dive into the pool. <laughs> it. it it's always yeah, scary. Yeah, I agree. But it's always, yeah. it's, it's way like life begins once you jump. That's, that's a quote that everyone says, but you, you really don't get it until you jump. You have to jump. Yeah. That's what I've learned. Yeah. It, 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 yeah. I agree. Um, I was, I was terrified of women. I was terrified. Um, and I was, I was a grown guy. I was, a, you know, businessman and stuff. I was terrified, married, I went through divorce and still crazy. And I was walking with my sister, Scott. I was coming through um, this bar. And I'm having a conversation with my sister. And I saw this woman dressed and she was beautiful. And I made a statement to my sister. I said, she is such a beautiful woman. And my sister said to me, why don't you go and uh, talk to her? I said, oh, no, I can't do that. I can't do that. And my sister made a statement to me. She said, she's just as scared as you are. I was like, wow, I never, ever thought of that. 
And so I wasn't going to hit on her. I was really just going to tell her, you look beautiful. That, that outfit you had was absolutely just beautiful and you, it, you wear it well. And um, because my sister and I were, were uh, we had an appointment and we were heading someplace. But I was scared enough to, to not to do that. And when I did that, it changed my life. Um, I was able to communicate with people after that because I realized her response was nothing what I thought it would be. You know, I thought she would have, of course, yelled at me and told me whatever. But the response that she had, I was like, wow, she was kind of scared, <laughs> you know? You always build the narrative in your head, but it doesn't actually exist yeah. until it exists. Yeah, and that's what I wanted you to talk about because as I mentioned to, to you, that switching because the conversation as you said is in the head and we allow fearful thinking to govern our lives and just like that conversation i had with this girl because it was a fearful thinking i felt that you know whatever emotional baggage i was carrying rejection or whatever i, I you know it could have prevented that who knows what it what it did for that that girl at that time, she may have been going through some, some stuff and whatever, and the guy who stopped and compliment the way she looked and how she carried herself. It, I have no idea what it could have done to, to, to her life, but I, I know what it did to mine. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So um, that's why, like you said, people need to take that leap and sometimes don't allow the fear to keep you from uh, meeting that person, shaking that hand, um, doing that uh, uh, thing that you're doing. So here you are, Scott, you're, you've learned this secret and you're applying it to your life. And what were some of those uh, changes that you began to notice in your life as you began to uh, use this tool that you're using in your art and your, your uh, sport life into your natural life what did it begin to do to you and what did you notice as you began to navigate so what happened once i started to just take those leaps was opportunities yeah. would arise left and right out of nowhere especially ones that i yeah. had been incubating or manifesting in my mind for a long time as soon as i would mm -hmm. take those leaps those experiences or those opportunities would just arise right at my footstep as if they were already there just waiting for me to take that leap. Yeah. So I, I, I believe it's there. <laughs> oh, it's always you know, there. It's just waiting on you, man. It is. It's, it's, it's just waiting on you. The blessing I tell people, uh, Scotty, is waiting on you. It's always been there. It's just waiting for you to change your perspective. And like we, we were talking about, not be scared anymore. And once we surrender to that, um, life becomes sweet, man. It does. <laughs> that's where you know, that's where your life begins. Like I said, life begins once yeah. you jump. Because your yeah. you hindering the the leap is preventing anything from coming into your life that you want. It's all a mindset shift. Yeah. Once you shift your mindset and you act on that shift, everything starts to fall into place. Yeah, and it happens quickly. People don't understand. Um, the reason why the delay is there, Scotty, is because we delay it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and it's really interesting. Um, we delay, but once you, like you said, you make that switch, um, people will start manifesting in your space quickly. A conversation will change a, a uh, an email, a phone call, a text come out of nowhere uh, simply because you made an internal switch that um, what you just did was gave them permission to to enter in. Absolutely, and that's 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 what we do. Yeah, so you know, tell them, man, give, give permission to to allow the outside your blessings to come in but it's waiting on you. So here you are, you're seeing this manifestation happening. 
and the energy of your switch calling these people into your space and so forth. How did you begin, Scotty, to kind of like put it all together, if you will, as to, hey, you know, this is working and it is working all the time. Talk to me about that um, that day because it, 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 it is a day, man, when it, you're laying down, you may be doing something and and all of a sudden everything makes sense. Talk to us about that. It was like a rush of just utter euphoria, just a, a overwhelming yeah. sense of gratitude for my life and my choices and the experiences I've made and the trials and tribulations yeah. that have led me to the point that I was at to accept everything that it was I was trying to get into my life. Um, I hired a mentor and he kind of refined the idea in my head of like how to look at things, how to calculate and how to execute. And ever since hiring mm -hmm. him, my entire life has been unsurmountably better. So yeah, what I recommend everyone to do is if you're lost, if you're confused, if you don't know where you're heading, you, you have a flawed system and you need some guidance. And by hiring yeah. a mentor or somebody that is where you want to be to help pull you on the path that they're on to get you where you want to go, it is life changing and it will pay off a hundredfold that self development investment you're going to make into yourself. Yeah, we call it in, in the corporate world that I was trained, we learn how to model ourselves yeah. after. Um, you talked about uh, looking at uh, moving to California where all the energy is, the wisdom as to how to do. You surrounded yourself with the wisdom of how to do. And the next thing you know, you realize, wait a minute. And you saw how to do it was the mindset. And then you learned that and you began. And so that's what I tell people, get around people that know how to do and you will see that you will begin to do it. And um, they, you know that old cliche about who you surround yourself with, it really is true, <laughs> you know? Um, and as uh, Scotty said, find yourself a coach, guys. Don't be afraid to bring in and expand your team because that coach or whoever that is, that mentor is a part of your team to help you to get to where you want to and he or she will bring some additional um, tools into your um, your knowledge center, if you will. And once you begin to um, exercise and use those tools, you will get an uh, outcome that you're looking for. So he, you've gotten your, your mentor, you've got all of these things, and you're moving through life now. Scotty, um, talk to us as to where you're at. Uh, because I tell people that space that you talked about is something precious. Um, those that are listening to us, walk them through um, getting there and the the peace study, if you will. Life is difficult, but there's a there's a different type of peace there that uh, resides in that space. Talk to them a little about that. Even though there's chaos, there is that peace that you learn. So what I've learned is that the peace comes through taking action, taking action towards your goals, yeah. towards your life. I get it through putting myself through physically demanding uh, experiences, working weightlifting, going snowboarding and doing really gnarly stunts, skateboarding and pushing myself, pushing the boundaries of what is possible. That's where I've learned how to find the inner peace because I am powering through the fear that is holding me down and allowing myself to flow into a higher mental state in a higher perceptual experience. It's always going to be scary. It's never going to be easy, but that's the human experience. We're all going through yes. hard perceptual life 
but you have the opportunity of life and your experience is what is shaping you and your journey to then learn and pass down the totem pole to the next generation coming up. So, and that's it. Yeah, you get to that space where you become a servant, man. Exactly. And that's, that is joy. It's a totally different space. And, um, I remember one of my mentors told me, since because of fear and stuff like that, he says, people die once, uh, with death, but he said, fear kills people every minute, every day. And they just don't even know. And I was, part of that, like I said, parts of it, but you're learning about yourself and there are new aspects of uh, fearful mindset that you have to undo because you're programmed that way by people and society and all these other things. And as you learn to change your program, uh, fear is the uh, main program that runs in all of us. It is that one that you're going to have to face every day, every day, as Scotty was talking, as you began to move through your life. And the, what's keeping you and I back is because we are not familiar with the other side and fear keeps us from not experiencing that other side because of what he said, the key is letting go, man. So um, let go. Uh, Scotty, I want to thank you so much for coming to Threads, man. This has been a really good um you guys, I'm going to provide everything for you to get to him. Make sure that you touch base with him because he has a lot of information to give you. The key to living and changing your life is your mindset. Um, uh, Jesus said this thing to his disciples. He said, take no thought saying it is your thought life. Do not agree with all the thoughts that come your way. You have the power to choose which one you will allow in your life. Choose wisely, man. Thank you so much for coming, Scotty. Thank you, Ken. I appreciate it. Have a great day, everybody.